Greetings, Ohio Valley. This is Dan Lima with OSU Extension from Belmont County. And this is Karen Cox from WVU Extension in Ohio County. Thanks for tuning in to Extension Calling, your source for research-based information for the farm, garden, and home. Hello, Karen. Hey, Dan. Welcome to dry season. <laughs> what do you mean, welcome to? It's been dry season. I know. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's been... I did not think we'd be talking about this for so long. It's very unfortunate. We've we've done many shows on this, but um, the last comparable drought was 88 is what people are saying. I haven't looked into that, but. I said, yeah, we were alive, but a lot of our colleagues maybe weren't even born yet. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's possible. I mean, don't get me wrong. I wasn't doing much in 88, but. I was alive. <laughs> uh, let's see. 88 was my last year living in Ohio. And then we yeah. moved to Florida. You went from a dry one to a wet one. <laughs> Every afternoon at four. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It, yeah. The floor, like it's it, as you go to the equator, right? It's a, like um, the, the the tropics around the equator, which I'm not sure. Most of it, I think, is tropical, but not all of it. Yeah, but they do they do say it rains every day, and it's typically like on a schedule. Yeah, so you have the dry season and the wet season. Um, it's not truly tropical in Florida; it's subtropical, but it's you know, I guess the saying is close enough for government work. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Oh, goodness. All right. So we have a topic today that was requested by one of our avid listeners. So Althea, here's your show on garlic. And so we're going to talk about how to plant it and get it ready for overwintering. And we hope you enjoy it. All right. So yeah, garlic. Um, Yum. (laughs) No. All right. (laughs) Garlic is in the allium family, which is in the same family as the onion. And like the onion, the garlic is a bulb. So if we look at the definition of a bulb, it is a complete or nearly complete miniature of a plant encased in fleshy modified leaves called scales, which contain reserves of food. So if you kind of look at a tear shaped bulb like garlic, also like tulips, those layers that you can pull back, just like an onion, those are typically fleshy and they are modified leaves that could turn into photosynthetic organs, especially if they're outside the ground. But they also house the, um, if you go to the innermost part of the garlic, what you'll find is the shoot. And at the base of the bulb, if you look close, you'll find little root hairs or remnants of roots, especially after harvest. Um, If you're harvesting it right away, you'll see really uh, obvious looking roots. But those little hairs at the base of a garlic that you find when when you're purchasing cured garlic, those are remnants of roots and all the different layers are modified leaves. So you essentially, when you plant garlic, You're essentially planting a miniature plant. Yep, a miniature plant that's waiting and ready to go. But the trick with planting garlic in the fall is that you don't want the green part of the plant to grow. You want the roots to grow. And this is mainly for us in the more northern climes where we do have those cold winters. Southern garlic growers have a slightly different different perspective on things because they do want that green to establish before winter so that it can hang out. But in our areas, we want to grow roots before the ground freezes, but we don't want that top to grow. So so what we recommend is using a soil temperature probe or, you know, you can grab the one out of your kitchen that you use to test your turkey and your other meats. I was wondering if the turkey probe was the same as a meat thermometer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, meat thermometer. There you go. Um, yeah. So you need a thermometer. I, I really recommend this because your goal is to 
measure the temperature of your soil four inches down. So you want that temperature to be 50 degrees. And, you know, we typically would recommend reading it in the morning. And if it's been unseasonably warm, which it isn't anymore, the summer, I would say, was warmer than typical. So you may be able to push back your planting a little bit. But the main thing is to watch that temperature. So once the temperature is 50 degrees and it's starting to go downward and no longer warming in the summer, that's when you want to put your garlic bulbs in the ground. That's right. So like everything, garlic wants well-drained soils at pH of 6.5. And by everything, I mean 99.99% <laughs> of most things. Loose soils. Loose soils is really important because again, you're putting that miniature plant in there and you have to have room for that root to develop underneath where you're planting. High organic matter. Raised beds are good for this kind of stuff, but you have to be careful with raised beds because you don't have as much winter protection as you do in the ground. The raised beds, depending on the width of them, obviously the wider they are, the more protection you're going to have. But if you have some narrow raised beds, you might have some problems with winter temperatures. So you want temperatures to be um, 32 to 50 degrees for at least two months so they can initiate the bulbing phase, which is where it's kind of establishing itself and putting down roots so it can stratify and take up its own nutrients. But you have to be careful because even though it, you plant it now, September, October timeframe, about when the temperature is kind of dropping uh, to these levels where the nights are actually getting below 50 degrees. But you want to protect it from temperatures below 20 degrees Fahrenheit, which our winters go below 20 degrees Fahrenheit. So you want to make sure that they're protected enough. So a lot of mulching, I mean, we always talk about mulching being a great insulator, keeping heat in, keeping moisture in, and protecting it from the the, the the soil from getting too cold as well during the uh, the winter time. Right. So mulching is a great way to do it just to make sure that the temperatures around the bulbs don't fall below that 20 degrees. And isn't it handy that the trees give us all sorts of free mulch right at the time we need to cover up our garlic bulbs? <laughs> That's true. Leaves are great. Straw is great. Hay could be a mulch, except it does have some weeds in there. So you have that different uh, problem down the road but but organic mulches are going to be the best source of insulation so again september to october it's a great thing to plant after uh, you kind of terminate your gardens for the season you might have to terminate them a bit early so you can't get too greedy with your tomatoes with your peppers with the sweet corn depending on when you plant it it might fall into that range really good but September, October, like right when the temperatures kind of fall between that 32 to 50 degrees, and uh, you want to put those bulbs, uh, like those, um, the scales, into the ground about two inches deep, and you want to space them about six inches apart. So they're not going to be really far apart, but they are going to have some room to grow. And the recommendation is to have the pointy side up, because remember, it's a mini plant. So... Roots grow down, shoots grow up. So right where you have those root hairs, that's kind of where the roots are going to go down. If you do it upside down, you know what? The plant has ways to figure it out. It's just a little extra, a little extra effort. Yeah, the cloves. I couldn't think of the, the cloves, <laughs> not the scales, the, the cloves. Cloves, bulblets, you know, the, you can call it all sorts of things. Uh <laughs> right. So you got the bulb and then you have all the different cloves that you plant. The cloves are also what you eat. Right. So yeah, plant them. Make sure you got good soft soil on both sides, uh, the, the top two inches and the bottom I would say another two inches deep, just to kind of make sure that soil is nice and fertile, nice and soft, so that the plant has a good root system to go down and go deep enough to overwinter without cold pressure killing it. Right. And so when you're getting those cloves ready to plant, there are a couple recommendations for better success. And what you want to do is you're going to 
find the best cloves. So you take out any cloves um, are not really a good size. They don't have a lot of that energy stored. And you want to make sure that the basal plate, the bottom of that clove, isn't broken. If that gets broken, that's one that you're going to set aside for dinner and not try to put in the ground because it they don't um, create roots as well when that growth plate gets broken. But you also want to look for at the cloves for small brown spots. That is evidence of fusarium, and it could cause your roots to get brown and stunted. It's a root rot. So you want to not plant those and remove them. And then if you've had a problem with bulb or seed nematodes in the past, you would want to soak your separated cloves for about 30 minutes in 100 degrees Fahrenheit water with uh, 0.1% surfactant. So basically you are Um, smothering and uh, cooking, for lack of a better word, the nematodes so that they don't grow in your bulbs and you can get the plants that you want. They don't eat that um, stored nutrient. So after you do 30 minutes and 100 degrees Fahrenheit, soak for another 20 minutes at 120 and then cool them in plain water for 10 to 20 minutes. Allow them to dry two hours at 100 degrees. So Just get them in a uh, dehydrator or something or plant them immediately. So you want to not let them sit in moisture because moisture, of course, is your enemy when it comes to those bulb rots. So like Dan was saying earlier, you want a fluffy, well-draining soil. If you have a heavier clay soil, make sure you're tilling in some lots of organic matter to help improve that drainage. And that you're putting these in um, without saturating them. You are still going to need to irrigate a little bit to help them get established. You know, they're not going to survive without water, but they don't need a whole lot of water when you have a heavy clay soil that doesn't drain so well. So be careful with your irrigation after you get these in the ground. If we have a little bit of rain, about an inch a week is the ideal for your garden plants. It's the same for garlic. But you definitely, if you have that heavier soil, do not want to over irrigate these cloves. And garlic comes in two varieties. Well, not varieties, um, categories. And then there's varieties within each category. You got the soft necks and the hard necks. (laughs) And the soft necks are what most people are used to. Uh, They store well. They tend to do better in mild climates. Uh, So when you're planting, think about the climate that you're in and also think about the microclimate. A lot of times we talk about how the cold settles in the valleys. Maybe that's not the best place to put the soft neck garlics. Um, The hard necks do a little bit better in colder, harsher climates. The soft necks typically do not bolt, so you don't have to worry about the scapes and the, the, which is kind of a flower. You know, we talk about when bolting, we're talking about just kind of a shoot that comes up a a reproductive flowering shoot. Uh, The soft necks do not do that. And again, most commercial varieties that we're used to are soft necks. The New York white's an example. They're typically a little bit more mild, but if you have areas a little bit more prone to cold, maybe you have a, raised bed kind of down in a valley area or a raised bed that's not very wide where you think the the cold air might infiltrate a little bit deeper the hard necks might be a better option they do better in the cold climates uh they do produce that scape it's a flower head that comes up i've never seen it bloom it looks like a little curly cue that comes up in the spring A lot of people are going to harvest those before they bloom. If the scapes uh, get to the point of blooming, they will decrease the size of the bulb. And so most people will cut those scapes off, sell them as a different product earlier in the spring because they still have that lovely garlic flavor. And they're great when you fry them up with some onions and put them on potatoes. And, you know, (laughs) so so whenever you see scapes in the early season at the farmer's market, 
pick them up, you know, give them a try. They're really tasty. Right. And Karen, you just beat me to it. They are going to be another sink. So that just means that the photosynthates that are coming up, because very early in the spring, you're going to have the leaves and they're going to start photosynthesizing. Those leaves are going to be feeding the bulb, but they will also feed the scapes as well. So if you want a bigger bulb, you remove the scape. If you let the scape there, you'll still get something, but it's just not going to be as large. But you're right. Yeah, Karen, um, I've never really had an experience with scapes that I recall. Oh, they're delicious. Uh, did you eat them mainly like in Florida or like when you were in Ohio? No, here. Okay. Here. Um, I got them at the farmer's market and they were delightful. So those are the hardnecks. I don't think there's going to be any issues with hardnecks in mild climates. Uh, but if you, like I said, if you have areas that you think are a little bit more prone to cold, go with a hardneck. Hedge your bets. Go with something a little bit hardier. That's the easy way to remember. Hardnecks, hardier. Uh, the soft necks are going to be more what you're probably used to, a little bit more mild. And, you know, if you're worried about diseases and such, uh, you, know, you can always get cloves and garlic for planting from reputable nurseries. That might go a long way as far as just having a little bit more insurance in your crop. Yeah. I mean, especially when you look at those soil borne fungi like Fusarium, you know, that's going to live in your soil forever. So if you buy garlic from someplace, you want to use seed that was tested for Fusarium basal rot pathogens. So you don't want to introduce those pathogens into your fields and if you have a space that had that problem and you're moving in your planting area to a new field, you want to sanitize all of your tools to make sure that you are not spreading that fusarium to that new location. Right. And when you're saying seeds, you mean the cloves. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So to sanitize your tools and equipment, you want to... Physically remove the soil and debris with air or pressure washing, and then use a sanitizer. There's a lot of sanitizers out there that aren't very corrosive, unlike bleach. Bleach is pretty corrosive. So, you know, you want to protect your equipment too, but try to find one that has low corrosivity and is effective against fusarium. So, protect your new fields and have a healthy crop. So if you've had like a lot of problems with bulb rot, you may already have fusarium in that space. So I would recommend whenever it happens again to take that bulb to your um, university's pathology lab and see if they could test it to find out if it is indeed fusarium. Yeah, so, so planting garlic is much like planting tulips, except you're not digging them up and eating them. <laughs> I, I wouldn't recommend that they're poisonous but again the, you know they're both bulbs you they they both get planted in that september october time frame and you don't want to do it when it's too warm because then it just because then it'll shoot you know you'll yeah. get that green growth which we don't want in the fall in the north yeah and that in the winter will mess that up so yeah so you want it September, October time frame again, 32 degrees to 50 degrees. And that 32 to 50 was for two months, right? Correct. Two Before months. Before the soil freezes. Yeah. And, and as far as uh, putting the mulch down, I, I don't see a reason to put it down right away. You can if you want. It does conserve moisture and such. But if you just kind of want to plant it, and then you want to go back later and put in the mulch. There's nothing wrong with that. The mulch is going to give you winter protection again from temperatures below 20 degrees. So you got you got a while um, from planting to when you have to start protecting it from the harsh winter. Come spring, you should see the leaves start coming up. See those scapes if you did the hard necks. If you did the soft necks, again, you won't. And garlic is harvested typically in July, and they say when about 40 to 50% of the leaves turn yellow. So when you start to see that yellowing in just under half of your crop, then it should be ready for harvest. 
So to, to harvest garlic, you're basically going to pull up the plant, grab it at the base, pull it up. Hopefully you have nice loose soil. Everything comes up together. And then you'll, you'll want to do what's called curing. So it's kind of a post-harvest process to make sure that it lasts. If you're looking at something that you want to keep for a longer period of time, it seems like the soft necks are going to last a little longer than the hard necks. Um, for the curing process, put them in a, a warm, dry area. So like a barn, allow some ventilation in there. It typically is hung upside down to where the bulbs are up and the leaves are down. So at the point where it's dry and it's a little harder, you know, not too soft, um, the roots are dried up and they've died back some. And then to store it, you'll want a dry, cooler area. And it should be good for months. You know, garlic is one of those things that keeps well. You can sell them at the farmer's markets, like Karen was saying. I've always been a fan of fresh garlic. I think it's a great thing to have around. You know, it just, uh, it actually goes well with a lot of crop rotations. You know, we always talk about breaking that pathogen cycle and planting something that's a completely different family from something we're used to. So if you're following tomatoes and peppers and um, I guess if you're doing, if you're doing pumpkins, you might be pushing it like in a little late October to November. But if you're doing something like cucumbers, you know, those, those kind of wrap up between September and October, or you could force them to wrap up between September and October. <laughs> and it's just a great time. It's just a great follow-up crop to do. Not exactly what we call a cover crop, but it is a great rotation. Right. And so when you're looking at that plot and, you know, you're getting your garlic in, you can, depending on when you plant it, maybe put a cover crop on like no-till in some oats or something because they're going to get killed in the wintertime. Once we get those really hard freezes, uh, you know, it gets down to below 20. If you don't live in an area where it gets below 20, then the oats are not going to die and they may become a weed problem. <laughs> And garlic, like onions, it's very sensitive to weed pressure and weed pressure will decrease their clove production. So you do want to control weeds early and often so that those narrow tips have a lot of sunlight. They need full sun. And again, they don't want to be soggy. So some of the diseases that you're going to look for, um, of course, are mostly going to be fungal. And the best way to control a fungal disease is to prevent it. Things you're going to look for are white rot, fusarium, botrytis, um, rust, penicillium molds, purple blotch, powdery mildew, downy mildew, and bacterial soft rots. So if you see any moldy plants, you want to remove them as quickly as possible. Make sure that you're removing all your debris at the end of seasons. Now, some of the things you're going to look for are the yellowing and dying of older leaves. If you see tip burn, that can show the indication of the declining root system or a rotting bulb. So you want to pay attention to those coloration changes in your leaves and that tip dieback. If you start to see like water-soaked lesions on your leaves, that is probably botrytis. And that, again, can lead towards your bulbs rotting and even love having them rot while they're in storage. So it is one of those things where you get to your crop and you put it in storage and then it still has a problem, right? So you want to keep an eye for those as well. And, of course, high humidity and warm, wet weather. It's great for fungi to grow. So those are the times where you really want to start paying attention to those problems in your leaves. So again, that, that well-draining soil is going to go a long way with garlic. Really is, yeah. Because, because you, we eat the roots. So you know, if there's a crop that you want good roots in, it's stuff like onions and it's stuff like gar garlic, even though I just call it a root, but it's actually a bulb, right? Right. We've yeah. Through this. We covered this <laughs> at the beginning of the show. Uh, what, one thing I did want to add to to what you said, Karen, you didn't, you, you said oats and oats is really important to, to, to understand 
as a good cover crop because it's not very hardy in the winter time, not like in our growing zone on I-70. But if you if you did something like annual rye, you could get in trouble because it is not winter killed and it'll compete with the garlic mm -hmm. and it'll just smother it out. So you know, be careful when you're talking about a specific cover crop with garlic because oats is going to be a very different thing than annual rye. Right. And, you know, mulch isn't really going to compete. So if you don't want to risk it, then go for just some nice mulch. Uh, yeah. Some nice piles of leaves so that your lightning bugs can overwinter as well, right? <laughs> and those lightning bug babies are going to help control slugs, which are another pest of garlic. Those lightning bugs, what can't they do? <laughs> but, but, you know, the nice thing about the oats is if you have a nice cover, you're getting winter protection. And as soon as those get smothered, like as soon as you get a good freeze and they collapse down, you do get some more protection. Mm -hmm. So great way to capture some nutrients and mulch at the same time. But I think if you're going to, you're, you're better off supplementing some of that organic mulch with wood chips and leaves and stuff like that, because the, the, the more insulation, the better off you're going to be, especially at a two inch planting depth. Exactly. And, you know, if you have any questions about um, any pests that, affect garlic or how to control pests or how to grow garlic and store it, uh, please reach out to your local extension office and ask. Thank you to everyone who has sent us an evaluation. That information is so very important. We are still looking for feedback from our listeners. So if there's a show that you've listened to that has really helped you, then please fill out that evaluation again and just let us know how you're using the information for the show. And we're always looking for new ideas on things that you feel are important. So let us know what you want to learn from our show. You can find the evaluation online or you can just call us at the office. You can reach me at 304 234 3673. That's 304 234 3673. And you can also contact me at 740 695 1455. That's 740 695 1455. Thanks for listening to Extension Calling. This show is a collaboration between OSU Belmont County Extension Educator Dan Lima and WVU Ohio County Extension Agent Karen Cox. If you'd like a transcript of this show, contact us at the office. Also, let us know if you enjoy the show by ranking us on your podcast app.